Hey friends, so I'm looking at Genesis 1-1 and I wanted to show you just how thorough and careful I am in drawing conclusions and how deep um, I go sometimes in finding the truth. If you're new here, my husband and I use the Complete Word Study Old Testament and then there's also a New Testament one and then there is also Um, a an Old Testament dictionary and a New Testament dictionary. In addition to that, I have my Young's Literal Translation. I have my 1611 King James, which I don't have in front of me. I have my Interlinear Bible here. And then sometimes I also get online, online as well, um, in, which I did for what I'm going to share in um, this. I hurt my finger earlier. Ow, it hurts. Um, but I'm fine. Praise the Lord, I'm just fine. All right, um, so I just wanted I just wanted to share with you, and I'll link to this tool, be tool below, uh, where you know, to, to my tools below. This okay, my Young's literal is falling apart. See, um, and I don't know. I think I've maybe had it a, a year or so. This is a Texas Receptus based translation, uh, and of course the interlinear Bible. Well, we'll look at that. I'll show that to you. So I've already shared in my video on how I study the deep things of God, um, so, some of the benefits of this book and this book. But one thing I want you to remember and I need to stress is that if anything that is published by a publisher is gonna have false doctrine in it. So you have to really exercise discernment and go beyond just one tool a lot of times. Uh, for example, our books are not published by any publisher. They're self-published. And Amazon hates them. Please leave reviews on them online, by the way. I appreciate that. Um, we've got some more coming out, some more books coming out. Um, all right, so in the beginning, God created the... I'm going to try to get up in here. All up in here. All right, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. As you can see, it. My book gets quite a bit of use. God created the heaven. Let's break it there. There we go. Okay. So right above it says, "Dia, <laughs> Df, Du, and Nn." Okay. Df, Du, and Nn. We're gonna go back here and look that up. Df, Du. I'm gonna write that down before I forget about it. D-F, D-U, N-N-N. So I don't accidentally forget. Go back to our aids back here. There we go. All right. D-F is a definite article. What is a definite article? in Hebrew is prefixed irrespective of gender or number to the word it identifies. Nouns without the definite article, stress the class, blah, 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 blah. Basically, it's the, okay? Oh, and uh, this is for educational purposes, so the publisher can't sue me. I'm trying to help sell your book, publisher, so don't sue me. All right, so there is the DF definite article in a nutshell. So we had DF, DU, NN. We're going to skip to NN and come back to the other one. Let's see. NN. Noun. I think we know what a noun is. I don't think I need to tell you about nouns. So we're going to just say, okay, so it's the plus a noun. And so we got the something and a noun is what the Hebrew itself is telling us that word is. So D-U, what is D-U? This is important. D-U, dual, 14 C-80. Okay, let's go to 14. 14. By the way, you can sometimes get these used on eBay for cheaper. D-U, the dual number refers to two of something. Two. Huh. 
two, it is primarily used with nouns that are associated with things that naturally come in pairs, such as certain pairs of the human body. Like here, it's, it's translated as two years before the earthquake. Two hundred. So it could be translated as two. It could be translated as a pair. I mean, a pair and two is basically the same. It is the same thing. But it also says C also 80. So 80 might give us a little bit more information. And we want to be thorough and careful. So what is 80? 80 is plural. All right. So we... But it, the, the word itself isn't actually plural. The, the word is dual. But two of something is indeed plural. So this makes sense that, that the plural is referenced under that. But what we saw here, as we go back to Genesis 1, is du, dual, two of something. So, it should actually read, in the beginning, God created the heavens, two heavens. He created the two heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the two heavens and the earth. Now, we don't want to just rely on this tool, okay? Because this is a, this is a deep thing. This is a big thing because people really get upset about this sort of thing. All right, what is the, what is, I don't remember what the, what Young's said. Some of the things in Young's are, I mean, Young's is, is, is now my favorite translation, favorite Texas Receptus translation, but it's not, it's not perfect. It's, it's definitely not perfect. In the beginning, God's preparing the heavens and the earth. So this does properly translate it plurally as heavens, because if you have two of something, you got heavens. Yeah, I need to wash my floor. Get over it. All right. So we got the inner letter of your Bible here. The In case you aren't aware, the Old Testament was given to us in Hebrew. The New Testament was given to us in Greek. Now, the New Testament has various Greek translations. And the in my opinion, after doing a ridiculously stupid amount of research that I probably shouldn't have done that amount of research, uh, the Textus Receptus is the way to go. The Textus Receptus Greek it is uh, what the King James, the Geneva Bible, Young's Literal Translation um, are derived from. And that, it, so I, I've discussed in a ton of other, I mean, you've got the, the uh, Codex Sinaiticus, the Codex, Codex Vaticanus was found at the Vatican. Are you going to trust anything from the Vatican? I'm sure not. Um, and then you got the Codex, what is it, the Codex Sinaiticus that was dug out of the trash. Um, yeah, I'm not going to trust that. And then you've got the Westcott and Hort Greek. Um, and the Westcott, Westcott and Hort um, both are, uh, both were, I mean, they lived in the late 1800s. They uh, were uh, occultists. And let's just call occultism what it is. It's Satanism. So, whereas the Texas Receptus is from the actual people who... Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to, to seek God's will. So this book here, uh, let's see, the English, tran there's an English translation um, in the side column that's literal, and it is, from, it is by J. Green Sr., and it is a literal translation of the Bible. This is, it's a different literal translation. So what does that say here? All right, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So I really like my literal translations of the Bible because I want to know what the Bible actually said. I want to know what the Hebrew actually said. I want to know what the Texas Receptus Greek actually said. Now, if you're looking at this for the this sort of thing for the first time, this is Hebrew here, okay? And yeah, it's a little print, isn't it? The weird thing about Hebrew is that you read from the right side to the left. So... In the beginning, created God, the heavens, and the earth. In the beginning, created God, the heavens, and the earth. Now, I want you to look here. I'm going to grab my pencil. Right there. You see that? It looks like an uppercase D with like an apostrophe there, doesn't it? Now, that is actually a suffix. 
um, because we're reading from the right to the left, that is the, la that is the end of the word. So that is a suffix that means something that it looks like a D. I'm just going to call it a, a capital D. I know it's not a capital D, but it looks like capital D to me. That capital D apostrophe that tells us something important. Right here. Hebrew. All right. Now I have looked the, 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 at the at the left end here. It's plural. D apostrophe. I'm just going to call it D apostrophe is plural. So right here, in the beginning, God created the heavens. D apostrophe. That's supposed to be a plural. That's supposed to be a plural. Now in this book here, it said that it's dual. But dual is also a plural. So did God actually intend for us to understand the word heavens as dual or as plural? I don't know. I don't really think it's as important as some people suggest. But if you think it's super duper important, okay. Genesis 1.1. So I looked at scripture for all.org, which has a free interlinear Bible on there. On there it says heavens and on there it shows the Hebrew as masculine plural. And then on um, Bible Hunt, on the Bible Hub interlinear, it says, uh, it shows it as masculine plural. Those both show the Hebrew as masculine plural, not as dual. So I hope, I hope this helps clear things up. The, 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 the heavens definitely is supposed to be plural. Um, I think that's quite clear. I, you know, as I said, this has to have some false doctrine in it in order to be published. Otherwise, it wouldn't be published. I'm not an expert on cosmology. I'm not an expert on anything except for my body. But in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We know it's supposed to be plural. We know it's at least two. Because we found it from multiple sources. Um, that are reliable and that have the right spirit to them. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If we go over here, God, in verse 8, and God called the firmament heaven. This is dual here as well. I should have looked this up elsewhere and I didn't. Let's look that up. Verse 8. Uh, verse 8. Let's look at heaven in verse 8. Oh, by the way, one of the things to note, original Hebrew manuscripts didn't have punctuation in them. So, and then also they didn't have uppercase or lowercase letters as well. Uh, actually, neither. This is the same, same case for Greek as well didn't have uppercase and lowercase. Just a note. All right. And, all right. So, and called God the expanse heavens. Heavens has that capital D with the apostrophe again here. So again, we're plural. Heavens. Heavens. Uh, za, 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 za. So I think it's quite clear that when our creator is telling us about creation, we have found uh, yet another error here um, in the King James. And uh, by the way, King James is, is a good translation, uh, but it's not perfect. There, there are errors, which I just demonstrated even here which uses the King James translation, heaven is dual, which is more than one, which means it should be heavens. So it's quite clear. <laughs> and, and also remember, um, English is a language that is used against us. And this is a huge issue that um, I think some people don't realize. So there are a lot of words that are coming um, about today, like manifest, 
which is scriptural, and I use it scripturally, but it's been uh, hijacked by the New Age movement. And this is the case for a lot of words as well. Now, what does this mean as far as cosmology goes, that God created the heavens, more than one heaven, which I don't, you know, based on, based on my, based on my study, it's actually not dual, it's actually plural, which could mean two or more. What does that mean as far as what's above our heads? How many heavens are up there? Um, that would require scripture to scripture. And I th if, don't quote me on this. I think Paul mentioned about three heavens, if I remember correctly. And if that is the case, um, it, as I said, this this isn't actually an important topic to me. I was just curious about it. This is just something that's not important to me that I was just curious about. And I went this in depth into it. If I go that in depth into something that I have very actually, actually very limited interest in, then just imagine how careful I am in my studies. <laughs> just imagine how many hours I put into um studying myself before bringing anything to you if I have done all of this with something that I'm not actually interested in <laughs> anyways so I do recommend these books um as I said if it's published there's going to be false doctrine in it that's just that's just the way it is um which is why you have to you know be be careful be intelligent um be diligent in your studies and most importantly, have a love for the truth. Uh, and regardless of whether that means that your beliefs are going to have to change, um, that's what matters the most is, is to me, I don't care if I have to change my beliefs. For example, um, there was a new subscriber that um, contacted us recently and asked, <laughs> Um, asked some questions um, very you know in love they were it was clear that they were just trying to seek the truth and saying well a lot of people say this I know what do you think about that and one of them was well there are these verses here in the Old Testament and it's not here in Genesis 19 but there are these verses here in the Old Testament that talk about how God hates people and I thought what um, I had not read those to my knowledge, or I certainly didn't retain them. And so I looked at them, but I, you know, and I looked at the Hebrew, I looked at, you know, the Hebrew verb tenses are not as relevant, are, are, are pretty minimally relevant, in my opinion, just because of the nature of the Hebrew language. The Greek verb tenses are incredibly relevant and incredibly important and can completely change the meaning of what you're examining. But basically, this reader or this new subscriber asked, um, asked about that. And so I looked into it. And those verses are indeed in scripture. King James does indeed translate them correctly. And uh, I, I was very surprised to say the least. Um, and so my response was, well, you know, I haven't spent you know, hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon on this, but it does indeed appear truly that God does in fact hate some people. How does that work? If God is love, how does that work? I don't know, I'm just a puny human. My brain can't possibly even understand the everything that God has created, let alone his entire nature and what he's capable of and what he isn't. But the, I, I was very surprised, very, very surprised. Uh, you know, it's something to look into yourself. But the, I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't have at my fingertips those, that, the, that list of verses to share with you. But the fact is that we are called, um, we are instructed to love. Like number one, love God. Number two, love everybody else. So if those are our instructions, then we are inherently not to hate other people. So, uh, 
I do focus on prophecy a lot in my studies be, because so much that we are seeing is coming to pass um, or being set up. And a lot of, you know, what we are, what, what, of, of what we are disclosed, what is disclosed here, we are seeing a lot of precursors. We're seeing some things legitimately begin to come to pass. Uh, for example, the three-part series on Blessed Are the Barren and the Wombs That Never Bear. Uh, that is the judgment of the living God. And by the way, we don't have any kids. Uh, so I'm not speaking about you personally. I'm saying uh, as a whole, um, that is that is God's judgment. And that um, is a blessing to us that we don't have children. I mean, I, children are a blessing, but it's a blessing to us that we don't have children um, for Dave and I. Anyways, so the, the most important thing when you're studying is to figure out what your belief is based on your study, not my study or someone else's study. I listen to my Bible studies personally multiple times. And a lot of times I'll go back and listen to them again because I need a refresher. So I recommend uh, doing that. I hope this has been clearer and not confusing to you. I know this is pretty academic. Um, I know this is pretty extensive and nerdy and geeky, but I'm a nerd, I'm a geek. Uh, my background is in academia. I was basically a biblical scholar, but I threw it all away because everything was a lie just about. Um, now, obviously my Bible has literature classes. You know, the, the Bible was written and then as an inspiration and a guide for liter the rest of literature, in my opinion. So, of course, you know, the Bible has some, has a literary aspects to it. But most of what I was taught, I threw out. I, you know, I was, I was a good Christian soldier in the church, uh, except I wasn't a Christian. And I most certainly wasn't a soldier for the most high. Well, I mean, I was, I, I, I was, I thought I was following him, um, but I, I, since I have thrown everything out and, and started over, I've realized that almost everything I was taught was a lie. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump and my whole, not my, I mean, my entire lump wasn't leaven, but it was pretty darn close, I think. Uh, I, I, but, by, but by his grace has he chosen me uh, and hopefully he has chosen me to endure unto the end. Um, those who endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So sorry if this was a little bit rambly at the end, but I just wanted to um, encourage you to study yourself. And if you don't have experience with studying scripture, then I would start in the New Testament, um, start in Matthew. And then I would read the New Testament multiple times, um, just on the surface before venturing into the Old Testament. Otherwise, a lot of people get ensnared into Mosaic Law and following Mosaic Law. Um, Mos Mosaic Law and the Ten Commandments are not the same thing. Galatians 3 makes that abundantly clear. Um, you can't understand the book of Galatians without, you can't just cherry pick out of the book of Galatians regarding the Sabbath uh, and declare things about that without understanding that. And that's one of the benefits of, of this here and with using an interlinear Bible is that you're understanding and you're seeing plural words. And if you have the understanding of the old covenant, then you can take that and say, oh, well, that's talking specifically about the Sabbath days that were related to the feast days. And you can recognize when those that sabbaths that word for sabbaths is being referenced versus the sabbath that we are to observe weekly because um, god wrote it in stone to denote everlasting permanence with his holy finger so that's it's quite clear uh in my opinion and uh, i hope that you endeavor to study yourself because times are coming when these videos won't be available to you anymore. 
Um, you know, you can download them. If you want to post them on your own stuff, whatever, go for it. Go for it. You can post anything we've got up online. I don't care. Uh, I would ask that you throw a link to our website or something. Um, but that's it. If you want to, if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to. So anyways, all right, go study, not tax account.